Okay, 17.1, understanding polynomial expressions. So what is a polynomial? Uh, a polynomial is basically just a term. It could consist of a number, a variable, or a product of numbers and variables that have whole number exponents. That's important, whole number exponents. Uh, remember, if it is a negative exponent, to make it a positive, we do the reciprocal. So for instance, this example right here, if they've given us, if we rewrote that, that would be 0.71 over x to the second. That is not a monomial because the variable is in the denominator. You cannot have a variable in the denominator. So that's why that one doesn't work. This one doesn't work because it has a negative. Okay, a monomial is a single term. Mono means one. So these are not monomials because... They are two separate terms. So that brings us to this point, what separates terms very easily. What separates terms? It is the addition or subtraction symbol. That's what separates terms. These are all monomials. So even though this one has two variables in it, it is still a monomial. It's one term because it's all multiplication. This is a monomial. This too is a monomial. You could think of this as the coefficient one-fourth. So real quick, just to continue with this, does 5ab squared have a denominator? Yes, it does. It has a denominator of 1. We just don't write the 1, and we've talked about that several times, how there are things that are implied even though we don't write them. Okay? This term can be split into 5 times a times b to the second power. These are the factors of the term, the factors. So every monomial has factors, uh, unless it is just a constant, such as back up here at number four. X has factors, remember, again, this is the implication with all this stuff, there is a one here. So its factors are one and X. Again, we just don't have to write the one. Real quickly, I'm going to go through this table, and we're just going to talk about are or aren't these monomials. Uh, this one is a monomial. Reason, it is a whole number exponent. This one is not a monomial. Why? Because this is not an exponent of that is a whole number. Instead, we could rewrite this as y to the one-half power. One half is not a whole number, therefore it is not a monomial. This is a monomial. We could also rewrite this as four, and so it's a constant, but it is still a monomial term, so yes. This one is a no reason because we have a variable in the denominator, which as we said before, if you rewrote it, that would be 5k to the negative 2 power, which indicates it's not. It's got to be whole numbers. Uh, this is not a monomial because it's two terms. So not a monomial. Mono means one again. This would also be an O. Two terms. This one is a yes. Even though it's a fraction, remember, this can be written as one-fourth k to the second, so our coefficient's one-fourth. So now we have the term polynomial. What is a polynomial? It's just more than one, okay? It's more than one. Then we have specific terms. Binomial, bi means two, so it has two terms. Trinomial has three terms. So when we're classifying them, we can classify a polynomial as monomial, binomial, trinomial, anything over that is called ever how many terms it has. So for instance, if it has four terms, it's referred to as a four-term polynomial, a five-term polynomial. What is the degree of a polynomial? So this is something that might be new for you, the degree. All the degree is is the greatest value among the sums of the exponents on the variables in each term. That's, that's critical, each term, okay? So you have to look at each term separately. So if I'm taking the example they've given me up here at the top, 8xy to the second minus 5x to the third, y to the third, z. 
I have to look at the degree of each term. So this one, remember it has an exponent of 1, 1. The degree of this term is 1 plus 2, which is 3. The degree of this term is 3 plus 3 plus 1, which is 7. So the degree of the whole polynomial is the highest degree of, the, of one term. So in this case, it's 7. So the degree of the whole polynomial would be degree 7. So here are a couple of examples here of what we were talking about. One up here, remember to the zero powers, one, anything to the zero powers, one. So really it's five plus five, which is 10, which is a constant, no variable. If there is no variable, then that means it's degree zero. It's not really a trick question, but something to think about. For these examples here, we're looking at each individual term, and it says classify by its degree and by the number of terms. Well, since there's one, two, three terms, okay, three terms, remember terms are separated by addition and or subtraction. It's called a trinomial. This one has degree four, two plus two is four, one plus two is three, one plus one is two. You pick the degree of the highest term, four. So that's a fourth degree trinomial. This is one and two, so that's three. 2 and 1, which is also 3, so both of them are 3, so we would call this a third degree binomial. So, standard form of a polynomial, what is that? It says containing only one variable is written with the terms in order of decreasing degree. So you go highest power to lowest power if it's a single variable. So this is just containing the variable x. So you do x to the fourth, then x to the second, then x to the first, and then your constant should always be last because there is no variable with it. Your leading coefficient is the coefficient on your very first term. So this would be a leading coefficient of five. The degree of this polynomial would be degree four because that's the highest degree on any one term. And we would call this a four-term polynomial. This one does not have a special name. The only ones with special names are monomial, binomial, and trinomial. So real quick right here, I'm going to give you a minute. I want you to try to write each of these in standard form and tell what the leading coefficient is. If you need to, pause the video, and then I'll have the answers up. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and put them in order, standard form x to the fifth, 4x to the third, minus 3x squared plus 10. Make sure you pay attention to the signs. You keep those on the coefficients. The leading coefficient here is a 1. Even though it's not written, we know it to be there. So I've done the same thing with these, and all I've done is underline the leading coefficient. One thing to note on number 10, you have a negative 7 and a positive 7. Those two 7s are going to cancel. Why? Because they are like terms, which brings us down to simplifying a polynomial. How do you identify like terms? Well, if they're both constants, they're both like terms. All a like term is is they must be the same variable with the same exponent. So if you're looking at a single variable, r squared, r squared, those are like terms. These are not like terms because that one has r to the third. So right here, they've given you some examples. I'm going to go ahead and skip those, and I'm going to go right your turn problems here, looking at like terms and being able to simplify. So again, I'm going to try to use different colors here to help you. So in this particular problem, this and this are like terms. They both are p squared, q squared. Since one's a positive 3, one's a negative 3, those are actually going to cancel. We also have p squared to the third and p squared, or sorry, p squared q to the third and p squared q to the third. Those are like terms. Coefficient of negative three, coefficient of four, four minus three is one, so I have p squared q to the third. Again, you can put the one here if you want, but you don't have to. And then I'm left with plus p q. So what I'd like for you to do is try the next two 
pause, and then I'll put the answers up. Okay, so what I've done here is first done distributive property across. Then what I've done is I've used colors to underline like terms. And then something the book really didn't talk about, but I like to tell students is, if you have different variables, uh, order, standard form, you try to go alphabetical. So 3A plus 8A is 11A. 3B minus 6B is negative 3B. Negative 6C, negative 8C is negative 14C. And again, I think of those as positives, negatives. Here, you need to pay attention. Remember, there's a coefficient of 1, a coefficient of 1. I did the A squared terms first. Then I did the AB because if you go alphabetical, A to the second should come before A to the first. 4 squared is 16 plus 10 is 26. So I'm using colors here to underline. Some teachers use different number of lines or whatever to help you indicate what are your like terms. You can do whatever you need to to help you identify. Okay, so now I'm going to do this, your turn number 15, solving each, for each real world scenario, excuse me. Nate's client said she wanted the width W of every room in her house increased by two feet and the length 2W decreased by five feet. So what we've done is we've written the expression here to decrease the length and we've written the expression to increase the width. So the polynomial 2w minus 5w plus 2, or 2w squared minus w minus 10, and we'll talk about how you get this in a latter lesson, gives the new area of any room in the house. The current width of the kitchen is 16 feet. What is the area of the new kitchen? So how are we supposed to solve this? We'll just take a second to process the information, and then we'll continue. Okay, so what we have here is we have what the current width of the kitchen is, 16 feet. Well, W in this case for the formula of the new kitchen is in terms of W, the width. So all we're asked to do here is plug in. So 2 times 16 squared minus 16 minus 10. So we're just putting 16 in place of W in the equation. And if you simplify that, you get... 486, and this is in square feet because we're talking about the area. Now, another way you could do this is go y equals, type this in under your y equals, go to your table, put it on ask, put 16 in, and it'll give you 486. So I'm going to give you just a second to go ahead and try number 16 on your own. Then I'm going to put the answer up, and then you'll have your homework. Okay, so for the second example, they give you an expression for the height of a rocket, and it's asking you how high will it be in four seconds. So you're putting four into this function. If you simplify that, you get 564 feet would be the height. So for this particular lesson, 17.1, you're doing numbers 1 through 23 odd.